Hello everybody, meteorologist Jacob Campbell here with your WeatherNow forecast. So, in light of the severe storms that are going to be happening uh, this weekend and then well into the midsection of next week, I am not going to be doing a, uh, a forecast video, I'm going to be doing a severe storm analysis video. Uh, right now I'm going to be focusing on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, however I will also uh, talk about the potential risks for Monday and Tuesday. Um, there is some big stuff going on and it could get a little dicey. So, uh, before I get started too, I wanted to let you guys know I am currently working on upgrading my graphics. So I have made a new, uh, bar for like storm prediction center risks and whatnot. Also, uh, rain risks. And then if you look down here in this bottom corner, I've got this little cube going. Let me know if you guys like that or not. I just want this to look more like a, um, newscast stream so to speak so um anyway let's get into it so this is the storm prediction center risk for thursday and we have this line of uh slight risk of severe storms all the way from wyoming into ohio and the reason why this is um important is because there is some instability in the atmosphere along this line that may trigger some uh, supercell activity popping up I don't have a graphic of it in the video. However, um, if you go onto the uh, College of DuPage website and you look at their numerical models for both the GFS and the NAM, they show a large amount. They, it's called supercell composite. And so basically what that is, is it is a, um, a mathematical equation that takes in uh, CAPE, it takes in wind shear and it takes in uh, directional shear specifically in the uh, lower to mid levels of the storm to see if there will be um, supercell, you know, development and whatnot. And uh, that's particularly high along a lot of this area stretching all the way from Nebraska over to Ohio. Um, and then it even extends down uh, near the Evansville area into northern Kentucky around Lexington um, and then even near the Charleston area of West Virginia and Pennsylvania, um, and then all the way up in Michigan. And so the primary threat from these storms is going to be very strong winds and potentially large hail. Um, I believe the storm prediction center has it at a 15%, uh, risk of large hail and damaging winds at 25 miles of any given point within the area. Um, and only a 5% for tornadoes. So that's really good news for you guys. Um, and basically what is happening is we've got a trough that's moving through. So a trough is when the uh, jet stream dips down low. And then what you have inside that trough, it's also known as a short wave. Um, particularly in these events, short waves tend to uh, come off of troughs and they're just deemed short wave troughs. And so these bring in cold air from the north and it just pools wherever uh wherever the shortwave happens to be um and then it pools cold air aloft so the jet stream is usually around the 500 millibar level which is about halfway through the uh, troposphere and so you've got an area aloft that has quite a bit of cold air and so if you have any amount of um warmer air near the surface then you are likely to get um convection because you've got cold air on top of warm air and uh, so that's pretty much what's going to be happening throughout the day on Thursday. Fortunately, this Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area is free of storms for the most part in the day on Thursday because they are going to get hammered this weekend. Moving on into Friday, we have this enhanced risk for severe storms in the Nebraska area. And then we also have this uh, uh, enhanced risk for severe storms in the western Oklahoma slash Texas area and then a slight risk around that, and then a uh, marginal risk stretching, once again, from about Nebraska to about uh, the edge of West Virginia and Maryland. Um, <clears throat> and so what we're looking at here is we've got another shortwave trough that's going to be coming down over the Rockies and accelerating it. And so we're seeing um, some wind speeds in the area um, uh, in the area down here coming to about i believe 50 to 60 uh, knots which is just slightly above that in miles per hour um it's about 55 miles per hour if i recall correctly um and if it's 60 it's about um 66 67 miles per hour um and so essentially 
what we're seeing is we're seeing a large system moving in with a lot of cold air aloft, like I said before, with the shortwave trough moving through. And then what you have on top of that is you have stronger winds that are uh, aloft, which means that you have a larger uh, wind gradient which is also known as wind shear. And so if you have a large wind gradient from the ground to um, the top of the thunderstorm, it tilts the updraft, and then it causes it so that um, basically long-lived severe thunderstorms can develop if you have enough cape. So uh, in these areas along the uh, Texas to uh, Nebraska area, the Storm Prediction Center has put out a significant severe um, risk and so what that essentially means is that with these colors, anywhere in these colors, it means that there's, an like in the orange, there's an enhanced risk for um, severe th thunderstorms within a 25-mile uh, radius of any given point within that enhanced risk area. With the slight risk, same thing, same with the marginal risk. But a significant severe means that there's a 10, uh, there's a, um, uh, there's a higher chance of severe storms happening within a 10 mile radius of any given point within it. And so that, if you follow my mouse here, that significant severe stretches all the way from up here in northern Nebraska, all the way down just to the west of Oklahoma City, and then following this enhanced risk down here and then back up. So it would not surprise me if the um, National, or sorry, not the National Weather Service, the Storm Prediction Center extended this enhanced risk down into uh, the Kansas, Oklahoma area because the risk of storms is higher. Um, Cape kind of drops off in the Kansas area, which is why they don't have an enhanced risk because they do have that upper level wind that's going to help tilt the updraft, but they don't have the, uh, the amount of cape to sustain the updraft. So you need kind of a, a sweet combination of both in order to create these big, severe thunderstorms. Um, as of right now, the uh, Storm Prediction Center does not have a, um, um, what's it called? A risk out or uh, like a detailed risk like a probabilities risk of um, tornadoes large hail damaging winds um, but if it were me I would say there's probably a 10% chance of tornadoes at 25 miles of any given point within these uh, enhanced risk areas and then through the uh, enhanced risk and the slight risk areas, I would put a uh, 15 to 30 percent chance of large hail and or damaging winds within a 25 mile radius of any given point. The um, with the uh, slight risk, though, I would drop the tornado probability down to about uh, five percent or even two percent. But the marginal risk is definitely going to either be a two percent or a no zero uh, percent because there's just not a whole lot going on in that marginal risk area. It'll primarily be some really short lived thunderstorms, uh, maybe some uh, uh, QCLSs or quasi linear convective systems, which are also known as squall lines. They're just lines of storms that form that produce some strong winds um, and maybe some small hail. But uh, that's pretty much the outlook for Friday. And I'm sorry if I'm throwing out some big terminology. Uh, I'm trying to explain it as I go. These uh, episodes aren't scripted. So I'm uh, coming up with all of this as I go along. Um, <clears throat> moving into, this is the 500 millibar map for Friday night. I know it says valid Saturday, 0Z. Zero 0Z uh, is also universal time. Um, it's UTC universal uh, universal coordinated time. I know that it's UTC, but in English, it, the C comes before the T. Regardless, um, <clears throat> this is about 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, it's 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and so what we have here is we have this uh, 500 millibar winds, and you can see the short wave trough here. The trough is centered up here, but it's channeling in some cooler air from more northern areas that will then turn to the north and then accelerate as these, these are called isobars. Um, so isobars are levels of pressure at equal pressure gradients. It's just, this is a height map essentially. Uh, so you could look at it as a, a, top, a topographical map. And so down here you have lower pressures and over here you have higher pressures, but it's all 500 millibars and it's all, this is halfway through the atmosphere. Um, but so you see when these isobars start to tighten, 
the wind speeds tend to pick up because you've got um, dropping pressure very quickly. And so air likes to move from high pressure to low pressure. So if you have a, a tighter pressure gradient, then that tends to accelerate the wind. And so we have wind speeds in this Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska area um, in the 50, around the 50 degree or 50 knot mark, my bad. Um, and so when we have that, like I said before, it likes to tilt the updraft, which helps sustain longer lived severe thunderstorms. Um, and so that's going to be the big story on, during the day on uh, Friday is this western part of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, and uh, also Texas. You're going to see some severe thunderstorms that are kind of fueled by not only the higher cape that you have in the area, but also the wind shear aloft that is going to help tilt that updraft. Moving into uh, Saturday, once again, I know it says Sunday 0Z, but this is actually 7 p.m. on Saturday. Um, we also want, we once again have that, um, uh, we have an even further tightening of the isobars here, um, which is going to cause more accelerated wind speeds. So we're starting to see, uh, a lot wind speeds aloft in the, um, 70, uh, 70 knot mark, uh, in these areas down through Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Um, and that will once again help tilt the updraft and make these storms uh, last very long. But these storms are going to be a little special. They are remnants of the storms the day before that affected uh, western Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and Texas. And these storms are going to revamp during the nighttime hours into the early morning hours. And then the models are starting to indicate that it will form a line of storms along this... Um, uh, along this uh, uh, short wave, the, the edge of the short wave, the eastern edge of it. Um, and then these storms will continue to push on to the north. So later into the evening on Saturday, um, Illinois, <clears throat> Iowa, Missouri, you will be dealing with these storms, which could bring um, some uh, damaging wind and perhaps some hail. Uh, not really a, a big outlook on tornadoes because Cape values are actually fairly low in this area during uh, the evening hours on Saturday when these storms would be affecting you. Moving on to, uh, this is Monday night. There's not a whole lot going on on Sunday. Um, there is a slight risk area. I'm not exactly sure where they have put it. Um, or not a slight risk, but there's a risk area. Once again, not exactly sure where the Storm Prediction Center put it. But... Um, Sunday is going to be very tame compared to the rest of the days moving on uh, into about Tuesday of next week. Um, we see that we have these, um, this, this, uh, another, sorry, a second short wave dipping down, pushing over the Rockies and accelerating through once again, the Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska area with wind speeds at 500 millibars at <clears throat> edging into 90 knots. Um, so that's going to tilt the updraft. Um, in so far in, um, upper air scan models, it's showing a very large amount of directional shear, which means the wind on the ground is moving in a different direction than the wind aloft. So on the ground, the wind may be blowing due east, but then aloft at the 500 millibar level halfway through the troposphere, it's moving to the northeast. So what you have then is that um, that directional shear can cause updraft or spinning updrafts, uh, which could lead to supercell development and tornadoes. And so there may be a risk for tornadoes here in the area on Monday, uh, particularly Monday night. But it's a little too early to tell. I'm just bringing this up so that everyone everyone knows, you know, that this is a chance on Monday. And I'll be making a video uh, for the Monday Outlook. Um, and if you follow me on Twitter, I will also uh, upload updates as the Storm Prediction Center puts out new information and new uh, models start to come out. So, <clears throat> end of the day on Tuesday, we see a very strong upper air wind uh, max wind speeds here because we don't really see any other high wind speeds except for off the off the map to the west. Um, 122.7 knots. So this is a very very powerful upper air shear. Um, it's going to be. I mean, winds at the surface may not be blowing that quickly, but then you go um, 
few kilometers, about seven or, or seven to twelve kilometers up, is usually where the 500 millibar level is. Um, you're going to start seeing extremely fast winds, which can once again, and I know I've been repeating it a lot, tilt the updraft. And so areas within Oklahoma, um, Kansas, and parts of Nebraska and parts of eastern Texas may see some uh, some very powerful and very long-lived storms as these storms will probably begin to develop here in southern Texas and then move to the north uh, through the Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska area, just gaining strength as they go along. Um, here are Cape values in the... Uh, Nighttime hours to early morning hours on Saturday um, at 6 Zulu. Uh, this is around, so 0Z zero is 7 p.m. Add six hours to that. This is about 1 a.m. Uh, 1 a.m. on Saturday, um, central time. Uh, these storms are going to be fueled by this higher cape, uh, through the area in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And so we're seeing Cape values in the Oklahoma, Kansas area around 2750 to about 3000 joules per kilogram. And then in Southern Texas, or not Southern Texas, this is West Central Texas, um, seeing joule, or sorry, Cape values around uh, 3750 to 4000 joules per kilogram. And so this will really be the energy that is feeding these storms that are causing them to continue to live through the day through the nighttime hours on Friday into the early morning hours on Saturday. Moving further into the uh, daytime into the nighttime on Saturday, Sunday 00z, so about 7 p.m., there's still that high cape value for the Oklahoma area. And this is when Oklahoma has uh, some of their higher risks for severe storms during the time. Same with Missouri and Iowa, as cape values in Oklahoma are maxing out somewhere around the, once again, the 2750 mark. Um, and then in Iowa, they're lower in the, the 500 to 1,000 joule per kilogram mark. So if you live in these areas over here, it is going to be a very active weekend for you. Moving into the day Tuesday, these are not Tuesday. This is Monday. My bad. These Cape values, as you get further and further away from the current day, which I'm recording this on Wednesday. So this is... Um, almost a week out, they get very, very inaccurate. So into the nighttime hours, uh, evening hours, sorry, on Monday, um, the Cape values are maxing in uh, Texas and not so much in Oklahoma or Kansas. But uh, I have a suspicion that these will probably, uh, as we get newer models, will spread to the north um, into the Nebraska area as... Um, some models are indicating this is the uh, ECMWF European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast model, uh, which tends to be the most accurate uh, medium range uh, forecast model. But the GFS and the NAM models, which are the two uh, American models, haven't uh, quite gotten their forecasts that far out, which tend to be better in short range uh, forecasts than the ECMWF model, in my opinion. I mean, everyone has their own opinion on it. And so uh, I think that as we get more updated models and as we get closer to the day on Monday, we may see these Cape values extend into uh, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and I may have already said Kansas, I'm not sure, <coughs> but Kansas. So, once again, this is going to be a very, very big uh, weekend for thunderstorms and severe thunderstorms. So, if you're a chaser, um, definitely be careful out there when you're chasing these storms on tu uh, sorry, Friday to uh, Tuesday because these storms have the potential to be uh, very powerful. So, I hope that you all enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope that you all are having a wonderful Wednesday. So thank you all and have a great day.